The mineral property streak is looking at the color of a mineral when powdered. And in order to test the streak, we have to be certain that the hardness of the mineral is less than 6.5 because that is the hardness of the streak plate. And if the mineral is harder than the streak plate, we're damaging the plate rather than powdering the mineral and testing its streak. When we look at streak, we are looking at two things. We are looking at whether there is a streak called congruent, meaning the color of the powder on the plate is the same as the color of the mineral in our hand, or incongruent, meaning the color of the powder we see on the plate is different than the color of the mineral we're holding in our hand. The important thing that we want to write down when it comes to the lab is the color of the streak itself. So, <coughs> excuse me, I have a red colored mineral, it's kind of rusty red, I rub it on the streak plate, and what do I see? I see a congruent streak. It has a red-brown color. So you could write down congruent, but the most important thing to write down is the color that appears on the plate, which in this case would be red-brown. If you take a mineral, we have this sample. We're looking at a light-colored mineral. We rub it on the streak plate. You might not see anything. Now, you might think that means this sample doesn't have a streak. What we're actually looking at is a white streak. And the great thing is the tabletops in the lab room act as large, dark-colored streak plates. So when we rub the light-colored mineral across the table, we actually see a white streak. Now, before you test it on the table, ask your instructor to make sure that it's soft enough to do this. Because if the mineral is too hard, what you're actually doing is damaging the tabletop. When we have an incongruent streak, here we're looking at a gold-colored mineral, we would expect a gold-colored powder to come off on the streak plate. Instead, what we see is this dark gray-green streak, which is telling us incongruent, the colors do not match. We also have special properties that we're going to be testing that only a few minerals do. The first is a reaction with hydrochloric acid. Uh, if we put hydrochloric acid on the surface of the mineral and it reacts, it'll look like fizz. This is a very special property because very few minerals actually do this. Now, when we say hydrochloric acid, we have a very dilute hydrochloric acid, meaning if you get it on your hands, it's going to be okay. It's not a strong enough concentration to do major harm. But when we put this dilute hydrochloric acid on the mineral, you can see that it's actually fizzing. It's effervescing. Uh, so when you see this in the lab book, you'll see effervescence, it means fizz, it's reacting the mineral with the acid, it's creating CO2, the same gas that we breathe out, that's the bubbles that you're seeing. Very special property that you will want to make note of in your lab manual. The interesting thing is that there are some minerals, and in our lab we'll see one, where if you put hydrochloric acid on the surface, it doesn't do anything doesn't fizz, doesn't make any bubbles. But if you powder the mineral and put the acid on it, you can see a little bit of fizz, and if you listen, it may not come through on this video, but you can actually hear the bubbles popping, kind of like uh, Rice Krispie cereal when you put it into a bowl. The next property that is special that only a few minerals have is magnetism. And we're going to look at strongly magnetic and weakly magnetic, starting with weakly magnetic. We have round minerals for a very good reason. We set them on edge and we take our weakly magnetic mineral and what we want to do is we want to actually get the magnet to roll and bounce. It's not strong enough to get it to jump. If a mineral is not magnetic, we hold it up, we try to do the same thing. There's no interaction whatsoever. If a mineral is strongly magnetic, what you'll see is at a great distance, I can manipulate the magnet, and it's so strong I can even get the magnet to jump and sit on the mineral surface. Magnetism, again, being a special property, is something you definitely want to note as you're going through and trying to identify the minerals. The next special property to look at is specific gravity, and this is how heavy a mineral feels for its size. We have minerals that when you see them, you expect them to be a certain weight or a certain mass, and when you drop them into your hand, they feel exactly as you would expect. We have other minerals that are a certain size, looks a little bit smaller, you expect it to be lighter, but when you drop it, it's actually much heavier when it hits your hand. That's called a high specific gravity, 
meaning its weight for its size or its density is very high. The last special property that unfortunately we're not going to really test but I want you to be aware of is called tenacity. Tenacity is how a mineral responds to stress being placed on it. The reason we don't really test tenacity in the lab is that testing a mineral and how it responds to stress often leads to breaking the mineral and damage to it. But I do want you to be aware that different minerals will respond different ways to stress. We have uh, a tenacity that when we apply stress to this mineral, I push my hands together, it flexes, it bends. It's able to respond to that stress, and then when it's removed, it snaps back to its original shape. We have tenacity that when we take something like native copper and we pound it with a hammer, it is malleable. It responds by flattening out or changing its shape and is permanently altered. And then we have tenacity or behavior that is brittle, which we take a sample, I'm going to remove the other pieces, and when we hit it with a hammer, as you think it might happen, it breaks or shatters into different pieces uh, in response to that stress. So for this video we looked at streak, the color of a mineral when it's powdered, and again you want to write that color down, and special properties uh, we're looking at reaction with acid, we looked at magnetism, specific gravity, and tenacity.